This week on Ellison and Overtime, we'll highlight volleyball play around the district, Marcus Volleyball is under new management, and we'll check out the Clown Mountain Bass Fishing. Hello and welcome to our first episode of Season 3 of Ellis Man Overtime. I'm Brendan Selke. And I'm DJ Crickshin. We're excited to be broadcasting from our brand new studio. Yeah, it's pretty nice, isn't it? Oh, it looks amazing. Now let's start off with some district volleyball action. Tuesday night, Marcus hosted Plano West, the team that bounced them from the playoffs last year. Marcus had their work cut out for them as Plano West was coming in on fire with a 19-2 record. In the first set, both teams were battling hard. The Lady Wolves showed off some impressive defense with senior Ansley Dennison getting a total of four blocks. Plano West took the first set 25 to 23. The second set was all West. They gave Marcus nothing and won easily 25 to 11. Down two sets, Marcus called an early timeout in the third. The TO worked for the Lady Marauders as they took an early lead thanks to great offense. Senior Maggie Cox was a big factor with seven total kills. But the Lady Wolves fought back late and took the third set 25 to 20. Plano West beat Marcus 3 to 0. Yeah, I'll give credit to Plano West there. They have a really good team. Hebron traveled uh, Flower Mound and other, uh, another Tuesday night matchup. The game started with Flower Mound and Hebron going back and forth. It was a very competitive game throughout the first set. Flower Mound was able to pull away as they won the first set 25 to 21. In the second set, Hebron took a late lead 23 to 22. The Flower Mound made a quick comeback and stole the set 25 to 23. In the third set of the game, Flower Mound completely dominated Hebron, winning 25 to 12 winning the game three sets to none and improving their record to three and one, while Hebron dropped to one and three in the early season. Opposite records, if you will. In other volleyball scores around the district from Tuesday night, Louisville traveled to Plano looking for their first win in district play this year, but the Lady Farmers fell in straight sets. After a great six-year run as the Marcus Head volleyball coach, Daniel Barker left for Keller over the summer. Overtime reporter Haley Baker talks to the new coach who has been watching Marcus from the other side of the net. The new Marcus head coach might be new in LASD, but she has a long background of coaching in other districts. Did some college coaching and then was brought to DFW to Plano Senior in 2020, right before COVID, um, and then got hired here in June. I think that they're adjusting well with the new head coach. We lost a lot of seniors last year, so it's not only a new coach, but also a brand new team. We're building relationships and I miss doing that in the off season. So it's been a little bit of a struggle because it's been nonstop volleyball since August 1st. Coach Petzold has emphasized his sense of leadership onto her players. She's all about team building and like having a good relationship with your team. And I think that's something that I've learned throughout my years of playing volleyball, but she's really like stuck with that. I am definitely passionate. Uh, I'm very vocal. I'm around a lot. So I think when you watch me in games, it's maybe different um, than the people that we play. I love that she's very like enthusiastic with like everything that she does, um, coaching wise and just like her as a person, I guess. Like she's just, she's so excited about everything. And I just, that's what I love about her. Um, I like how positive she is. She's always cheering us on. And, like anytime there's anything like a good play, she's always like just yelling. And I think it really encourages us. I mean, at the end of the day, you're not going to remember how many wins and losses you had your senior year of volleyball. You're going to remember how people made you feel. For LSM in overtime, I'm Haley Baker. Let's move on to some football action. District 6A had a bye week last Friday, so the only football action in LISD was 5A, the Colony. The 1-3 Cougars were hosting the 4-0 Burleson Centennial. The Spartans showed their strength early by scoring three touchdowns in the first quarter alone. The Colony got on the board with a field goal in the second quarter, but Centennial answered with two more touchdowns. At halftime, the score was an impressive 35-3. Centennial continued to dominate in the third quarter. In the fourth, the Cougars finally hit pay dirt with a 70-yard rushing touchdown by Rodney Gold, but that would be the only Cougar TD of the night. Centennial went on to beat the Colony 49 to 10. As district competition starts this Friday, let's take a look at how teams in LISD stand. Louisville stands at top of the LISD with a 2-1 record, their one loss coming from Highland Park. They will face the winless Flower Mound Jags for the Allisman game of the week. 2-1 Hebron will host 1-2 Marcus in their homecoming game. The Colony is 1-3 on the season so far, heading to Denton looking to get their second win in district. 
Moving over to some cross-country action, the Flowermont girls team traveled to California this past weekend. Lady Jags competed in the Woodbridge Invitational Meet in Irving. Flowermount placed fifth in their division, led by an impressive run from Samantha Humphreys, who finished third overall. Flowermount looks to continue their already impressive season this Saturday as they compete in the Mile Split Invitational in Denton. Flowermount Water Polo got their bling last week. Last Thursday, the Lady Jags Water Polo team received their championship rings. And last spring, Flower Mound defeated South Lake Carroll to win their second state championship in a row. The Lady Jags are looking to win the first ever UIL-sponsored water polo state championship this year. Yeah, and I really think they can do it. I mean, they did two in a row. Let's do three in a row. Great team. Yeah. Flower Mound is uh, also known for their many unique clubs and teams, so it's no shock they have a team for competitive bass fishing. Harley Smith has more on that story. I'm Harley Smith, and I'm at Flower Mound High School to visit the bass fishing team. Introducing the Flower Mound Anglers, who joined the competitive bass fishing community in 2010, when coach Stephen Davis was inspired by his son. About 12 years ago, my son was in school, and my son said, Dad, man, we, we need, don't you wish we had a bass team? And I laughed at him and said, yeah, that'd be great, son, but there's no such thing. He said, yes, there is, Dad, and sure enough, we went to our first bass tournament. Bass fishing is very popular in Texas, with over 400 schools participating. We have five regions across the state. Each team competes in four regional tournaments during the year. At a typical regional tournament, there are about 250 boats that compete for scholarship money and prizes. It may sound like a simple sport, but it proves to be very time consuming. It's, it's hard, you know, it's not, it's not easy. We're on the lake for eight to nine hours. I mean, we go pre-fishing every single weekend for four to five, maybe even more. You have a lot more stress and you're also getting out on a boat and then going and fishing all day long. You can't really just be like, oh, it's hot, I gotta go quit. You have to have a drive, but it's also really rewarding if you catch fish. With all Smith Overtime, I'm Harley Smith. I mean, DJ, did you see how good a uh, season Hebron had last year? I mean, yeah, they made it to the fourth round of the playoffs off of a play-in. I mean, yeah, that's just really impressive. You know, their volleyball team this year isn't having as much sex, success as they did in 2021, but Vinny, you've got a Lady Hawk that's putting up some impressive stats. Yeah, I have an amazing student. This week's LSMN Spotlight goes out to Kaylin Ginsberg, the bureau for the Lady Hawks. Last Friday, Ginsberg surpassed 500 digs for this season. This ranks her first in the district and third in the DFW area for digs. Earlier this year, Ginsburg had an impressive 31 digs against McKinney. Currently, Hebron is struggling with only nine wins, but with players like Ginsburg, maybe they can really dig themselves out of this situation and get a comeback. For Alice in Overtime, I'm Vinny Williams. Back to you guys at the sports desk. You know, thanks for that spotlight, Vinny. And also, thanks for that great pun. I can't with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure to watch the Alice Game of the Week here on YouTube. Friday night is the 2-1 Louisville Fighting Farmers head to Flower Mound to take on the winless Jaguars. That's all the sports news we have for this episode. I'm Brendan Selke. And I'm DJ Crickshin. Thanks for watching LSMN Overtime.